Welcome to Mission Control Houston. I'm here with Dr. Peter Voorhees, the principal investigator of one of the experiments on the International Space Station. Uh, this is a rather special run for this experiment because uh, it's one where we brought the samples up on the SpaceX Dragon vehicle and we'll be returning them home when the SpaceX Dragon comes back on May the 25th. So it's a very quick run and uh, Dr. Voorhees will tell us a little bit more about his experiment and uh, why it's important for it to come back so quickly. Welcome to Mission Control. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, you are here for some uh, regular space station program science meetings about right. uh, how we coordinate all the research on the station, right? That's exactly right, that meeting starts in a little bit. All right, well, we appreciate you taking time to join us today. Tell us a little bit about your experiment. What do you call it? Yeah, so uh, what, what we're interested is in studying how, the, how these structures called dendrites evolve. And dendrites, everyone has experienced. So if you go out in the, uh, you look at your windshield in the winter, and you'll see frost on your on, on the windshield. Those little things are, are dendrites. Ice crystals are dendrites, snow. And um, what happens when you make materials is they're solidified from a liquid, and when they solidify, they form dendrites. And it, the properties of the material are inherently linked to the way, what these dendrites look like. And what we're studying in space is how they evolve so that we can understand better how to control these dendritic structures on the ground and improve the properties of materials. Okay, and how long have you been working on this kind of research? Oh, my first uh, experiment for NASA was proposed in 1985. And so you did some space shuttle experiments too, right? I did some space shuttle experiments as well. So I've transitioned from the shuttle now into the space station era. Okay, great. And tell us the name of this particular experiment. This is called coarsening in solid liquid mixtures. Okay, and uh, what are the advantages of learning how these dendrites work and solidify in microgravity? Yeah, microgravity is really essential because what happens is when we do the experiments on the ground, it's just like uh, ice cubes in, in a drink. The ice cubes settle to the top. And so when we do the experiments on the ground, the dendrites settle to the top. And uh, that's exactly not what we want. We want them to be uniformly distributed in the liquid. And so in space, there's the absence of gravity and they stay approximately fixed in space and we can watch these things evolve in, in during the experiment without having them settle. Okay, now what material are you working with? Yeah. The material we're using is lead tin. This is commonly called solder. But the nice thing about lead tin is that it melts at a very low temperature. It's only 185 degrees centigrade. So it's easy to do the experiments in space. Okay, great. The uh, furnace only takes 11 watts of power. All right, and so uh, again, you've got a number of these uh, experiments and samples that have been worked on the space station already. That's right. This is a little bit different because it went up and it's coming back very quickly. Why is that important? That this, this is one of the, I think, the uh, real highlights of this particular uh, mission in the sense that we can send the experiments up, have them done, and return quickly because what happens is that the samples degrade once they're solidified, after they're solidified and it makes the analysis of the samples that much more difficult if we have to wait a long period of time before they come back. So the ability to retrieve the samples very, very quickly is really a, a really, real uh, plus for us. It's very okay, important. and so these samples are gonna come back on uh, May, the March the 25th. When do you expect to have them in your hands? March the 28th. Wow, that's pretty quick return. Yes. yes After yes. a splash down the Pacific Ocean and splash then a down, road they, trip they back go, to they Texas. They go to and long, long Beach and they take them out, out, of the, out of the furnaces at Long Beach and put them into dry ice and send them uh, to Northwestern. Great, and what kind of analysis do you do on these? Yeah, what, what, we, what we do when we get them back in the laboratory is that my students and postdocs will be working on cutting them up and looking at the insides of the samples to look at the dendrite structures. And tell us a little bit more about the potential benefits to people here on Earth from what we learn about this. Yeah, it turns out that the, the properties of materials, let's say aluminum alloys that are used in bicycles or used in engine blocks, are inherently linked to how the, what these dendrite structures look like. In other words, what these Christmas, Christmas tree-like structures uh, look like. And um, if you can understand how to control them, then you would understand how to improve their strength, improve their ability to withstand vibrations over long periods of time. And so what we'll do is we'll take this information that we get from these experiments and use that in, in codes that, that will predict the properties of materials. So I'm guessing this would apply to just about anything that's an alloy, a mixture of metals. Absolutely, that's right, that's right. There are about uh, a, 
a billion trillion dendrites produced every day in the casting of steels and 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 aluminum alloys that are used in, in virtually every material that, you, that every, every application you can think of. And so it's inherently linked to a lot of the properties of these materials. And of course, launching things to space is pretty expensive, and so we're not talking about making a factory to do these in microgravity, no, 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 no. but can you translate what you learn into improved processes for manufacturing that, on the ground? That's precisely the whole idea. We're not manufacturing in space, but we're using the information to improve what we know about the processes and hence Im impact things that we do on the ground here on Earth. Okay, tell us a little bit about you. I, did you always know you were going to be doing research in space? Um, no, I didn't know <laughs> when I when I did my PhD. Of course, I never thought I'd ever ever have the opportunity to do experiments in space. It's just that uh, the, uh, the the microgravity environment provided by the ISS or the shuttle is such a unique platform to do these experiments, and you can act really focus on the important issues associated with material science in many cases by doing experiments in space. So we know you're at Northwestern in the Chicago area now. That's right. Um, where are you from originally? I grew up on Staten, in Staten Island, New York. It's a borough of New York City. And uh, spent some time at, at, at NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology in Gaithersburg, and then moved to Northwestern now almost 20 years, 25 years ago. So I've been there ever since. Are you missing the cold weather yet? Oh, I couldn't believe how warm it was when I arrived yesterday. It's like 88 degrees. <laughs> All right. Well, Dr. Peter Voorhees, thank you so much for joining us here in Mission Control today. Explain a little bit about your experiment. Uh, good luck in your meetings here and uh, on your travels back home. And we look forward to hearing uh, the results of uh, how this unique opportunity to get your experiment up and down quickly works out. Fantastic. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you.